Okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's start. Hi, I'm Milos. I'm from Belgrade University, and I'm here to talk to you about rebuttal. So let's just establish some some ground for for, for the lecture before before the lecture actually starts. Uh, so I'm not going to be go over, going over the pure basics and stuff. I think there is a lot of good resources on this. From what I've heard, a lot of you are like already know when are <laughs> introduced to BP debating. So a lot of the basic stuff, uh, like I might repeat in some cases, but in most cases I would be going over some of the more advanced uh, and intermediate stuff that can help you become a better rebuttaler. Uh, secondly, uh, what I want to what I want to say, if you have any questions, I, I don't know how how these procedures procedures work. I'm gonna be having my chat open. So you can either write them there, or I don't know if you can unmute or whatever. So just yeah, ask me questions, or if something is unclear, because I sometimes have the tendency to speak very fast. Uh, that's uh, like uh, if you're ESL, you need to catch up to to people who can speak much faster than you. So that's like a professional deformation in, the, in this sort of situation. It's not necessarily a good thing. Uh, but yeah, so just stop me and uh, tell me that I need to explain something again. I would not be offended. Uh, I'm aware that I might sometimes uh, be super too fast. I've been told by judges that as well. Uh, so with that out of the way and with these formalities out of the way, let's, let's start uh, talking about rebuttal. So... In general terms, I think the largest issue that people and, and, and debaters are having is like this, uh, several things which we're going to cover now. One of them is how to prioritize and how to time manage some, some of these, this, this, uh, something like this. Spoiler alert, uh, there is no magical answer to this question. There is no textbook answer. Aha, this is how you prioritize this and this. But I will give you some advice on how to improve there and how, to, how, how, can, you, how can you make yourself better in this, uh, in this area. Second of all, this... Uh, people overestimating how much uh, are they doing with the actual rebuttal and not necessarily being aware uh, how, uh, what, what the rebuttal is doing. And third of all, sometimes even thinking that they're doing rebuttal, but they're doing something else, uh, which we're gonna cover last in this, uh, in, in this sort of situation. But let's firstly talk about some more like general stuff uh, in terms of what should be responded to and how that should be done to some extent. So the basic structure of the rebuttal like, obviously starts from what the other team said or something like this. So I have some things to say on this part, even though it's not, not, not major. But the problem that I encountered in a lot of tournaments very recently that I've been judging is a lot of people just misinterpreting what the team has said. The problem is, I, 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 like, I don't know if you convinced yourself that the, the team has said like this, or you think that if you uh, caricature what they said, you have a better chance because judges might buy that. The problem is, if you look at it from the perspective of a judge who already heard a specific thing, you're coming as a second person telling me that point. I already have some preformed opinion. Is that argument weak? Is that argument strong? Is that argument analyzed? How is that argument look? Because judging is a very dynamic thing. I'm already thinking about a lot of interactions that are happening. So if you're coming and dismissing a point and like misrepresenting a point to a certain extent, and if I track the debate correctly, it's very unlikely that I buy your framework. It's much more likely that, uh, like, like obviously, if I'm a good judge, I'm not going to do this. But if I'm a worse judge, that that like that misrepresentation pisses me off to the extent that I then dismiss the second part, which might actually have some warrants and, and, and things to say. So in, in that sense, this charitable reading principle, which means that you should be a charitable reading opponents' uh, arguments is not just there for the fairness of the game, fair play or whatever. It's also there because in the game of persuasiveness, which this is, it's much less persuasive to a judge if you are dismissing somebody's points towards that. And uh, to some extent, you're not doing yourself a service, even though you think you are doing yourself a service to some extent. This doesn't mean that you cannot diss somebody's points. Some some people have bad points uh, that, that, that are obviously there, but be very careful if you're not sure if they made a better or worse point, you always take the better version of the point. You always take a bit of more charitable reading of the point. Or at least if you want to be uh, like cocky and you want to trash them and you want to be like, like, like they, 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 this is horrible. This is like, this is what they said. This is, this is pretty bad. At least have a backup. Like even if, uh, even if, part of that rebuttal which can save you in this sort of situation because a lot of these things in, in when making decisions about rebuttal is basically risk management. What if judge didn't buy that this point is stupid and I said that it's stupid? What then? How does that interact with the debate or something like this? And you might cry like, ah, judge is stupid because buying stupid point. But what 
that happens in the end, you 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 get a third, and and then, then you lost two points. Like you can be salty all you want, nothing is going to change that score. So your ultimate goal is to overcome even these bad judges and some of these things. So the point is to always take this charitable reading of, of specific people's points. One of the advice that I have for for uh, for for this being being a thing, usually less charitable reading of the points and less and, and some misinterpretation of the points comes from uh, how, uh, how do you write and how do you track things during the debate. So here's some like basic advice that really helped me uh, in this, even though it might sound trivial, like ah, I'm talking about writing. So uh, first of all, I usually have a separate paper where I'm tracking my, like, like obviously, like I'm not going to go, I also track my uh, people who are right in front of me if I'm closing or something, just to know uh, if I'm be able to differentiate myself. But I have a separate paper for people who are directly across from me and the other team. So for example, if I'm OG for OO and if I'm CG for both OO and CO in that sense. What I do is I write the sentences the way they were said, but I don't write rebuttal immediately. Obviously, if I have to, if I'm the next person to come out and speak, that might speed me up. But in terms of like, for example, if I'm DL, DLO, if I'm a member of government or something, in the majority of the situations, we will have this leverage of just Putting things aside, okay, so I wrote this, uh, I can put an exclamation mark if I think it's, like, like, obviously you can find your own style where you can mark what, which points do you think are important, but it's very important to do it with the cool head. The problem is usually what people do and what what their brains do in this sort of situation, they write uh, write a specific, somebody said a, somebody said a specific point, uh, you like either like think you have a very awesome rebuttal towards that point, or you get triggered by a point because the point is very stupid or something this, and then you start writing or something this. The problem is you're not thinking fully rationally about this, and also uh, you're not necessarily hearing the full context of the point uh, that comes afterwards. They might be framed that comes after that point. There might be additional mechanisms and analysis that comes after that point. If you start writing and if you think of the response, immediately when somebody says, uh, when somebody says, uh, how do you say, where they're going to run to, you run into a potential problem, which a lot of people do, is that you assume where the argument is going and then you rebut that version of the argument. This is where also the first part, like charitable reading is coming from, right? right? Uh, so, so you assume the version what you think is going to happen rather than think that actually happens. That's why a lot of people do not actually rebut the mechanisms that people say, but rebut the general idea. Obviously, this doesn't mean that this rebuttal will be completely useless, bad, uh, like this, you should never do this or something like this. But in, in, in the improvement mentality, where you want to specifically target uh, 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 people, uh, people's points, and if you want to prioritize your time correctly, you might have an easier way to rebut a point because there may, might be a, like, a weakness of the mechanism which you can break the link of the argument. Also, your rebuttal might become irrelevant and your, your thoughts and like effort might become irrelevant by the later points, by the framing or something like this, or that point in general might become irrelevant. And the fact that you have written it on a paper where you want to rebut usually means that people are returning to some of the points. Like I'm hearing the same rebuttal uh, from closing and opening uh, opening opposition, for example, or to something that the prime minister said, which was already kind of stupid and already kind of something that nobody did buy in, in the end, but like people are just wasting time returning to that sort of situation. And that mentality comes from people's uh, pressure to some extent. Ah, something is said, let me write and let me think immediately about the response. No, no, calm down. Obviously write things down because you need to be able to remember what needs to be responded. So have a separate paper numerically, like you can, you can numerically say, ah, this is the first point, blah, blah, blah. And you leave certain space. You're not necessarily writing their speech, uh, but you're writing crucial parts uh, which you might want to rebut. So obviously you need to write a statement and obviously what you need to also try and track as best as possible, obviously this is hard, but I need to open the window, it's super hot here. Sorry, it was a little hot actually. What you need to, uh, what you need to, uh, how do you say, try and capture is also their mechanisms and how they're proving a specific point. This will become more apparent when I talk to about the second part in terms of what people are making a mistake when they're making the argument, but it's very important to track what this argument is based as a general idea, but what actually they said, because a lot of people, especially in today, uh, today's day and age uh, of the debates that I've seen, have maybe one or maybe one and a half mechanism that the whole argument is reliant on. And to be honest, it's much harder to rebut the general idea, which a lot of people are trying to do, than to just break the link of their one mechanism, which is proving their point, in which is their whole argument is hinging on uh, some of these things. So write these things down, underlining them 
is the most important thing that you can do because it will tell you a lot of the things about the argument. Obviously, there's other stuff. You can track some of the impacts if you want to mitigate it. You can write some of the additional comments or something. Like this. But the most important too is obviously the statement and like, like what, is the, what is the argument about? And secondly, it's this mechanism and marking the mechanism, uh, how do you say, in this, uh, in, in this sort of situation. Um, so yeah. Um, so this is uh, this is this is the this is this is the the problem. This paper is then afterwards not used for anything else rather than to remind you when you are actually writing your rebuttal paper and when you give yourself some time to think about ah uh, so this response. I mean, let me think about how how to how to interact with it. What do I write in in, in inside of this particular point? So that is the that 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 is one that is one thing. So the other thing uh, in terms of this charitable reading principle and also how do you say uh, how to like have less risk of judges buying or not buying a specific point. So usually what I hear and see in people rebutting arguments is uh, that I have a lot of statement counter statement sort of dynamics, which means that I actually receive a lot of pieces of rebuttal, but kind of none of them are actually developed. And that's what people make a mistake a lot, especially in this intermediate stage uh, when you're growing to, to, to have, how do you say, uh, to, to become better, which means that a lot of these things, like you, you do know how to respond. There are some smart responses there. It just time spent in specific rebuttals. Like people confuse a uh, number of things that you rebut uh, with with that being like a very quality rebuttal. So I always prefer to have less points of rebuttal, but targeted to a specific, okay, this is their debate winning point, but let me give a couple of different responses to that one point, then to respond to 10 things that they said, but give them one sentence or two sentences at best or something like this. So that's, that, that's the problem in time management. So in that sense, you need to learn to some extent how to prioritize which uh, things and arguments to do, which is the second point that I will go on to. But before this, just like I like to emphasize a specific point, which is that you do need to have uh, for, for important points, obviously, if the point is stupid, then not. Like for the important points, at least two to three different separate layers of response, attacking it from different several angles. And that's what a lot of people don't do. As I said, a lot of people are just going to say to me something counter to that in one sentence. The problem is in a lot of these situations, you're not doing as much as you think you're doing. And, and that, that, and that is a problem, right? Somebody has analyzed an argument for three minutes or two minutes, or let's say a minute, they've organized, uh, like, uh, like analyzed an argument. They have a lot of mechanism, possibly they've talked about the impacts, they've talked about context or something like this. It's almost certainly, also, uh, unless the point is stupid, unless you're very brilliant, never going to be enough for you to spend 10 seconds or 15 seconds, like 15 seconds to tell me what the point was, and then 15 seconds to tell me why the point is wrong. That's not going to be enough. And, 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 and pretending it's going to be enough uh, is sometimes very detrimental to the teams who say after the feedback or something is, but I responded to obviously you did, right? But there is a lot of things that these things teams said. You responded to the general idea, but the point, I'm still convinced you to the point because there's a lot of analyze, analysis and mechanisms inside of that point, uh, which needs to be convinced. But second of all, if you run one layer of response, there is a huge risk of just judges don't not buying that layer of response in particular. So if you want to hedge your bets, especially if you want to hedge your bets with, with wings, uh, for example, me and Yanko usually had a problem of chairs, a lot lots of chairs buying our cases, but a lot of wings wanting to split and roll the chair because they didn't get some of the points, some of the framings that we were trying to, that we were trying to get. Uh, what helped and like, like what is helping is if you want to address different target audiences with different points of, of rebuttal, right? And in that sense, uh, having three or four layers of response towards a specific thing is never a waste of time if that particular thing is important and crucial for their case working uh, or, or something like this. So that is a that is the additional point. Why is it important? It's important because. Uh, 
the rebuilding process of the next speaker, if you, if especially, especially in the situation, that's why people usually hate opening government and they hate uh, closing government to some extent as well. Like people like oppositions and stuff because you can have two people who always have a response, always have the final word. People love to have the final words and stuff. But um, the, the point is, uh, why they hate it? Because DPM comes out, responds to something in yellow says in one sentence, and then uh, DLO comes out and responds to that one sentence in the similar manner, right? And then, like maybe, like he he has a very simple job in deputy leader of the opposition to to how they say uh, just rebuild and answer one sentence. If if you give them four or five reasons why something must be true or cannot be true uh, in terms of rebuttal, why their argument cannot stand, they have to answer either all five or dismiss some of them or or, or do something like this, which is much much harder, and you're giving yourself much bigger. A chance for some things to to how they say stick around for some things to not get addressed, especially in this day and age. A lot of people are just ignoring that. Like if you do like that, that that's a lot of debates. If you if you start to do more layers of different attacks on the same point, a lot of people are just gonna pick one, rebuild one, but then don't realize that you have two others who are also still harming uh, their case in particular. So you might even get some sneaky uh, points off of off of this even 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 larger. Even larger sneaking, sneaking points uh, uh, in, the, in this uh, in this particular situation. So there is a lot of benefits of doing this. So how do you do that? How do you how do you how do you practice uh, doing doing this? And the problem is there is no uh, again a lot of these things uh, that, that people come to lectures thinking that there is like a magical thing that I'm now going to say, which is going to improve you in rebuttal tomorrow. Like, like now you hear you have this lecture and now you know how to rebut. That's not how any, 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 any of these works, right? What you need to realize is that a lot of these things take practice time efficiency. What I'm going to give you now uh, is how to say how to, like how can you practice this? How can you practice this at home and establish this, how to say, uh, establish this, uh, knowledge and something this and this feeling uh, in, in, about, about about the specific things the problem is uh, a lot of people go with how do you say uh, first of all the thing that they that they're comfortable with so if you started to do rebuttal like this uh, you're unlikely to to change that unless you're really trying actively to change that so firstly you need to give yourself tasks uh, especially like people uh, to some extent, I think people are people are viewing like prep tournaments as more like competitive. I need to, I need to break, I need to do all of these things. The the correct potential view, like obviously, like like in, in the very large competitions, that can be the goal in every competition, that can be the goal. But in some other competitions, your goal can just be let me try some of these things out. Let me give myself some certain task and let me see how that goes. So you can give yourself tasks that might sound stupid at the beginning. The point of all of this is to try and train your brain to uh, how do you say do this automatically do this more easily and think about different layers of attack so you need to need to train your brain in that way so in terms of the tournaments how you can practice if i have a specific exercise at home uh, which you can do which i'm going to tell, tell next but what you can do at, at tournaments is you give yourself a task which might be detrimental to your winning in some cases right like fuck it but like that that's not necessarily you're, you're playing the long game if you want to improve in debating you're playing the long game in terms of breaking in next worlds breaking in next euros and who the fuck cares if you fuck up around if you give you give yourself a task which trains your brain to become better later in, in this in these serve stages so for example you can give yourself a test that every part every rebuttal that you do you can do less of them has to have at least two separate reasons for why something is bad or three separate you can increase the difficulty however much you want but these small tasks are sometimes very useful uh whatever you're trying to practice in this particular thing is, is, is rebuttal but whatever you're trying to practice so give yourself tasks and uh, like like achievement points and like reward yourself afterwards but it's very important to actively think about it and actively make your brain do something different because habits are very hard to break otherwise and this is kind of what, how you're debating right now if you're debating for one year two years at least it's become a habit like you, you're gonna like in the stressful situation, your brain always goes for the uh, for the easiest part, which is what you're familiar with, which is what you have been doing all of the time. And if you always do that, you're never going to improve to a specific extent. You're never going to make this huge breakthrough uh, in your in your uh, debating style. So, what can be done at home in this sort of situation? This is going into this prioritization point uh, as well, and how do you manage time, and how do you how do you say how do you how do you decide what is even important or not important? Again, 
Usually people ask this question. The problem that the answer to this question is it, it depends from debate to debate. It depends on what teams have, have agreed. It also depends on a judge sometimes. Like obviously, uh, like some people judge worse than others. Uh, some people have worse wings. Uh, a lot of these things play into the game. And this is not, this is part of the game. And that's how you should view it. Obviously, in perfect world, everybody would like, I don't know, have like AI. I, robotics who would, who would decide who's the perfect winner or something but there's a lot of moving parts which means that learning how to debate is learning how to think on spot and like make a call in this sort of situation the problem with this is the way that you're training it at, at the moment usually the way that you're trying to improve is in a very stressful situation for your brain which is you are the third fourth round uh, of the tournament you need to break uh, you, you 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 want to kind of say do a lot of these things uh, you have 15 minutes uh, the, the motion, you might not know anything about this. So there is a lot of stressful things that are stressing your brain out and making it, how do you say, uh, not able to actually learn and take away from this sort of situation. So how do you, uh, what, what is my proposal uh, towards you in this sort of situation? So if you want to understand and practice specific parts of rebuttal, I think you need to break it down. You cannot do, like, like you're trying to juggle, ride the bike and do, how do you say, I don't know, uh, flips with the bike at the same time. What you need to do is break down specific skills for rebuttal that you need to do and practice these specific skills in separate order. How do we do this? So you can do this alone at your home. Fire up any speech uh, that you that you find online. Preferably, you can fire up something that is actually very good. Uh, like it doesn't have to be the world's finals, but just pick pick something that is good. Like obviously, you can learn from worse uh, worse debates or something like this. But like increasing the challenge is also very important, and also demystify some of these speakers, which is also quite nice because you see, aha, but I can't I actually can respond by a lot of things to their point, which is very good uh, in this research. So fire up a speech, and. Uh, Give yourself as much time as possible. Like pause video as many times as you want. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. But write down all of the things that you think should be rebutted. Like, like, like you don't give yourself pressure. There's seven minutes I need to track. Like, no, no, no. Like if you want, pause the video, return the video, whatever, do whatever the fuck you want. Uh, you do whatever the fuck you want with it or something. Like this. Obviously, if you're practicing this uh, like several times or something, so you, can, you can, like, can't give yourself challenges and say, okay, let me now do this in seven minutes or something like this and that's the end goal like you're like literally like going to the gym which like i wouldn't know about but uh, like i guess this that's an appropriate uh, that's an appropriate uh, uh, how do you say uh no, 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 not allegory sorry analogy analogy to this like you're starting with 10 reps but then you're 20 you're like is that a thing i don't know but you're, you're starting with different with different level of reps and, and you're, you're increasing the difficulty but at the beginning just like let yourself completely go return write down or something like so now that you have this on paper, uh, again, at the beginning, I, I would not time this or something this, unless you, you're constrained on time and then you're naturally timed. But I would not time this. But what I would do is try and rank these things, like however many things you have. Like obviously you should not have like 30 things or something, but that would be uh, crazy. But like, let's say that you have around 15 or 10 or like, let, let's say 20 or something that is things that you need to think uh, that needs to be rebutted. Then, do an exercise where you are literally just sitting there and prioritizing what is the most important thing to rebut, what is the least important thing to rebut, and rank them. Like let's say, let's say you have 15 from 1 to 15 in the level of importance to rebut or something like this. Why is this very important? Like, even though it might sound like a lot, why am I doing this? It's stupid. It's important because you're practicing a specific skill and actively making your brain think about this skill in, in the beginning. And obviously, the more time you're investing in like these priorities the better you will become the better trade-offs and things you're you're starting to make you're also debating within your head by the way you can do this with your partner as well like this is a good good exercise because you can do this with both because then you can actually have these discussions right you cannot have them during the debate right because like there is so little time uh like obviously in online judges are not shushing you uh, or something like this but like still it's very hard with, uh, with listening with all of these things but you can actually finally have this discussion with your partner which says uh -huh, uh like this this more important than this i think this is the thing that we need to focus on i think this is like and obviously having this discussion gives you a lot of insight into this obviously afterwards if you have a like somebody coach a friend you can also talk 
to them what they think uh, out of these things should be good. But just starting to actively think about it is already much more than a lot of people are doing, which is super important. Again, that first part of the exercise afterwards, you can increase the difficulty and said, give yourself uh, just seven minutes to track. Like, let's say that you want uh, to, to practice particular part of tracking within that skill set. Uh, sure, let's do that. Uh, if you if you want to practice, how do you say, efficiency in ordering, you can limit and time limit this. Uh, like you can give yourself 10 minutes, then you can give yourself five minutes. In the end, for example, you can give yourself two minutes to order everything that you have written. The point is to increase the difficulty over time just to become more efficient at it and that's literally how you train your brain in this sort of situation. Uh, um, in, in this sort of situation, so that's the first step that I would do of the exercise. The exercise, by the way, has three steps, and obviously, it's not. You don't necessarily even have to do it in the same day or in the same like in the same week or something. So that's why the exercise is good. But the same exercise has does have three steps. The, the, this is so the first step: learn how to prioritize and learn how to track. That's what that's what step one is about. And I think this step one is also very crucial because that's what a lot of people are asking. And a lot of people are asking how to improve it. There is no magical and there is no magical thing. It depends. It depends on a whole lot of factors. There is no list that I can give you. And even if I had the list, you dwelling on the list would be uh, like not productive for you because it might lead you to some weird conclusions or something like this. So this is the practice. Second thing, uh, step two, and, and, and in the practice of, uh, of of rebuttal, step two that I do uh, is then pick top five things. Like you, you, you you can pick whatever number you want. I think top five is usually usually good. So top five things that you ranked previously that are most important. Let's say that they are most important. And then what you do is give yourself an impossible task, and that's very this, this is very important part here. Like maybe the impossibility would vary with you uh, versus versus somebody else or something like this. But like what I usually like to do is give myself a task to either have five, like usually five, five separate layers of response to a single point. That's super hard. Like that's like you can have in some points are much easier than others or something like this, but that's hard. If you if you find it easy, obviously increase it to 10 or something like this. Again, this should not necessarily at the beginning be timed or anything. Just sit there. And like literally break your brains, uh, like until you like. I think like this came to mind when I was <laughs> when I was told to that I have to find ten arguments, ten arguments or or, or more even like more than ten arguments for the debate about legalizing drugs and legalizing mar marijuana. And it was like so hard after like like fifth or sixth to find completely novel and new things to say. It was like I'm breaking my brain, but it actually found it as a very interesting and fun exercise uh, because. You're trying, you, that's where you're practicing, first of all, creativity. And also that's where your brain is training to find different ways and solutions where to look when you're looking for different layers of rebuttal. And once you find some of these layers to look, the, pro the good thing is that they usually stick around. Now your brain, if you're obviously remembering this and if you're doing this concentrated, should know that some other point might have a similar angle of being responded to in this particular thing. The, and that is, very, that is very crucial and important. Find this creative thing and like unlocking your uh, like initial like barrier of, aha, I know how to respond like this in this way. Uh, and not necessarily in this other like several ways because like every point has like so many ways to be responded in the beginning. So that's uh, that's what I would do. Again, uh, increasing in the difficulty at the beginning, no time. Uh, at the beginning, no time. Let's say it's five, or if you're struggling, let's say three, uh, three uh, separate points or something like this. Three separate uh, points of rebuttal needs to come uh, to, towards a single point. Uh, what you can do afterwards is just, as I said, put yourself on a time limit per point or give yourself a more impossible task, 10, 15. Like you can, just, it would be lovely if you have achievements in debating or something, like in the gaming or something. It's like, like you did 20 separate layers of response towards a single point. Great job, uh, gold, gold star or something. But like you, you, you find your way to, like there, there is a scalability to this part of the exercise as well where you can find and obviously again once you're finding these points you can uh, discuss with somebody is this point even persuasive how do you find this fourth or fifth point of rebuttal in that sense so that's that's the second layer of the exercise third layer of the exercise is practicing your time efficiency and is practicing uh, you actually delivering that point uh, correctly 
to some extent. So then what I would say is give this five points, or if you can do five points uh, in three minutes or something, let's give like uh, take top three or, or something like this. So take these points that you have now set and now deliver them uh, deliver them with a timer uh, or something like this. Obviously you can, again, if you want super easy, I would not recommend this because that will be super easy to give yourself as much time as possible. You can obviously do that. Uh, the problem is this skill, third skill is time management. Uh, and third skill uh, is kind of all, already from the start needs to be to some extent time. You can give yourself more time. Let's say at the beginning, you give yourself like four minutes, which is not realistic for the actual speech. But to be honest, your goal is to try to cut it down to three or even maybe two minutes, two minutes, not necessarily because you will do it in your speech, but because you want to push your limits uh, on how much you can deliver so you can cram even more stuff in, in towards this. So what I usually do is, let's say that you give a speech, uh, I give myself time like to do these five points, uh, five points with five sub points in three minutes or something like this. Uh, and uh, after I've done this, uh, like I'll give myself a break of like two, three minutes to, to just think and gather my thoughts. And then immediately afterwards, I do it again, but with a limit, a more limited time, more restrictive time. So let's say like either two minutes, if, if I'm ambitious or two and a half minutes or one and a half minute or something, just try to push the same content through and see where I can cut time, uh, where I can, like, where, where did I stall? Where did I do this too much, uh, too much explaining? Where did I run in circles or something like this? So that all of these time efficiency is very important. And uh, if I want to flag where people should be more and more efficient, for sure when explaining the points of, of, of another team. Like I sometimes hear speakers explain to me what the other team said in like 30 seconds, for like 40 seconds sometimes they're explaining, like if you're explaining, you, you're literally repeating the argument for me to some extent, you're giving them a service, not you, uh, you, you have limited time, you, you, cannot, you cannot spend that much time towards this. Like that's 10 to 15 second stops. If you can do it more efficiently, that's even better. So if you look at the ways of a lot of people making mistakes, it's uh, how concise Saturday when they're explaining what the other teams are saying uh, and that should be that should be improved in, with this exercise as well so and afterwards after this when you're when you're done you can do this like uh, you can try and do this like uh, in, in real time uh, obviously you can try to do this like in real time at home but also a lot of these things you have to then push yourself and try to uh how do you say um to kind of implement in the tournaments or something like this. So as I said, you can pick a spar debate uh, to try and give yourself some some of these tests. Or if if not, you can pick a, a, like a tournament that is less important to you, which is like more prep tournament or, or a weaker tournament or something like this, where you would how do you say practice some of these things. But that's that's the most important part. You cannot like you cannot do the same shit or over and over again and expect improvement. You will improve in some aspects, but. And you will improve mostly because like just speaking is going to make you improve. But if you want to improve dramatically, you need to relearn some of the things that you think you already know, which is like, obviously everybody knows to rebut to some extent, but if you want to rebut excellent, you need to re forget how you rebutted previously uh, in order to, to rebut excellent. That's a bit of a paradox uh, of, uh, how do you say, competitive, no, not necessarily competitive debating, but basically anything that you want to excel at in this situation. So that is the exercise that I usually like to present to people. Uh, and I honestly think it's it's very useful. It's much more useful than me now. Uh, as I said, trying to give you something that just doesn't exist, which is like, ah, here is like the list of priorities, five priorities that you need to think about when that doesn't exist. That that like if people are advertising that to you, they're uh, they're selling you something, they're lying to you. No, but yeah, uh, how do you say uh, it's it's much more dynamic than that. Uh, so let's now uh, talk about let's not talk about the last part, uh, which is uh, okay. So 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 that's that, that's the part about how to improve it of at this. Uh, uh, these skills. If you have some questions regarding to this, you can ask me. Uh, but if not, uh, what I would propose is just to move on to the to the third part, which is uh, to some extent evaluating your own rebuttal and like hedging your bets and like what is your rebuttal actually doing, which is sometimes the problem uh, because you very much uh, need to be aware of, of what your rebuttal is doing. And usually, what people are thinking is that they're overvaluing and over. Uh, how do you say? Yeah, they're all valuing what they did with rebuttal. They're, that's what usually complain, even in in the, in the like when they have a call or something. Is ah, oh, but I responded, I destroyed this argument, uh, and they they still want. The problem is, so here here is the here is the hard truth. First, nobody 
uh, usually is that good that they would immediately with just the rebuttal completely destroy the other people's case. Like like even in like in, in the in the like in the best people speakers of the world will not be able to completely destroy the specific case. You're never going to win. Like never, but like, like obviously sometimes some, something happens. But like in the majority of the cases, you're not going to win by being right in 100%. So your case is 100% standing. Their case is 0% standing. You smash them, you won. It's much more cl closer. That's why you can see reflected in speaker points. Usually speakers are four or five points. Like that's the, the average two, three, four points uh, difference between the teams. That's not a lot. Uh, you're in the similar bracket or similar level of explanation, which pretty much means that pretty Pretending uh, and thinking to yourself that, aha, now that I've said this part of rebuttal, now I destroyed their case, is giving you false security, which is the most uh, the, uh, most hardest issue with this. The problem with false securities is that then people think in the web speech, in deputy speech, uh, that this is enough and that they can now move on to their case. Obviously, and th th that's also where mismatch between what speakers think and what judges explain to them is, right? Because if you're correct that you have actually destroyed their arguments fully, and then your arguments are steady, obviously you should win, you should get a first, you should be salty that judge robbed you or something like this. The problem is sometimes people, and often people don't have a cute, don't have an accurate grasp of uh, what they actually done and what is actually uh, correct and what is actually true in this particular thing. But the rule of thumb is it's almost never going to be 100%, obviously to the most important point that the other side is saying, which means that you should be also actively thinking to what extent am I able to mitigate or uh, destroy or whatever I want to do with the argument. So you need to be asking yourself this question actively during deciding to, to how they say, run a certain rebuttal point or, or do something like this. And that is, the, that, that, that is, that is crucial. That is crucial in you, how they say, uh, bettering yourself, uh, bettering yourself with rebuttal because a lot of people just go with the flow in this situation. So after you've done constructing your rebuttal, be honest. Look, look at it from a like. Forget that you're you. Then you think yourself. You, you, you have an awesome case, an awesome thing. Is this? How good is this? How far am I going to go? And the answer is not. If it's not destroying, then it's bad. No, no. Like it's obviously not because there is a scale. Uh, obviously, you can prove that they are less likely that they have less impacts. You can mitigate some of these things. That's completely fine. But you need to be aware of this because if you're aware of this, then you can do trade-offs, then you can do weighing, then you can do proper weighing. Because in a lot of cases, the weighing that I'm now hearing from the, from the teams in a lot of tournaments that I've been judging is literally, we win, uh, like we're weighing because they almost have nothing and we have everything on our side that my partner has proven. Opening government had nothing proven. We from uh, closing government have, uh, have proven everything. Literally, that's useless. That's, that's saying nothing. So you need to be very honest with what are the things that are standing there, giving them charitable leads, as I said at the beginning of the debate. And then in accordance to that, spend enough time to trade and weigh off. Also, one of the things that doesn't go in the favor of, ah, you're going to destroy somebody's argument completely, is the fact that if the debate is balanced, which it should be uh, if the CA team is doing their job correctly, if, this, if, if, the, if the debate is balanced, you are almost never going to be able to do this because the, 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 that has been baked into the cake of uh, CAs cracking the motion, right? If there is a silver bullet, that means that a team can literally destroy somebody's argument completely without nothing standing when without doing any trade-offs. That's probably an op-heavy or god-heavy debate or something like this and probably should not be set uh, or, 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 or something like this in, in, that, in that manner. So this means that when you're balancing the debate, we're already thinking of also responses that can be given to a specific argument. Are these, these responses just literally going to destroy that argument or something like this? Or is it going to be like back and forth or something like this? So, being aware of this uh, is, uh, how do you say, again, very important. You're never going to destroy a particular person's argument. And thinking about this and uh, taking the time to, 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 to how do you say, uh, be truthful to yourself with this is very important. But what is also important when you're thinking about this is also to be not truthful, but to be very explicit with the judge 
when you're doing this. A lot of judges, especially, and this is again, uh, by the way, like when people are complaining, they have a worse quality judges or something like this. That's one of the ways to, to, to combat worse quality judges. The, the, the reason, usually the problem with less, less uh, the, the judges who are worse off is that they don't know how to how stuff interact and how to adjudicate for them. And usually they love teams that tell, that tell it to them. And like usually they would go with the, the, the easiest explanation that they can give because they're not necessarily certain how to explain the, like that if you want to break down the, the psychology of that or something like this. But if you if you're telling them, okay, so now that I've said this rebuttal, their argument is flipped. Or, or now that, that this has been said, uh, their argument is significantly mitigated, which means that how do you say our argument and our impacts are much more substantive. So you need to always give this additional sentence of explaining what did you do. Otherwise, it's just going to get lost. Like 100% in a lot of cases, especially if the judges are bad or something like this, like look at it from this perspective. Judges have 15 minutes to discuss with their uh, two wings and one trainee or something like this. Everybody wants to speak. Everybody wants to give two or three minutes. Sometimes wings are bad. Sometimes wings want to speak uh, too much about a specific issue. Sometimes there is a huge uh, discussions about some, 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 some other topics. They, there is no chance for, for judges to go over every rebuttal that you've done and think about, oh, but how does that interact with this part of the debate? And that's where things get missed, right? And obviously, if you're a good judge, if, if you have better judges, obviously that will not be missed or something like this. And like, it will be much more dynamic. But you, you're not playing for the, like, you're not playing to win in that game. You're playing to win in an imperfect world where everybody, like even the best judges have off days or, or how do you say, uh, they lost their attention or maybe even connection got lost in one of, one of the seconds or something like this. So you're hedging your bets against some of these things. And the way that you're hedging your bets is literally writing and spelling it out and being like, okay, so this is what this rebuttal means. By the way, this part can also be inserted in, uh, in how do you say, uh, in the previous exercise, if you want to practice this, this, sort, of, uh, this sort of part. Um, um, the, the, this sort of part of exercise. You can also, even like if you want to uh, have a, if you want to have a, a more difficult version of addition. This is like a bonus on, on top of the previous exercise. You can do it on a second stage, uh, but do it for each, uh, like like uh, two point uh, um, two point four, uh, like two, two, uh, step two point five. You, uh, and I'll get to the question in literally one second. Uh, so uh, you can go into to like like step two point five, where you would pick like uh, uh, like first thing that you need to rebut. You have let's say that you found five responses that you want for each of these responses give a one sentence of what it does do to the argument or something is and then you're training your brain to think about these things a lot of these things again i'm not going to go into uh like because i think honestly uh, like like from 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 what i from what i thought uh, of gathering my thoughts in the previous uh, couple of months or something is i think uh giving you uh, lists or something and then you dwelling on it is much more dangerous uh, than anything else. And like figuring it out is going to trigger much more growth in, in the association. But th there, there are not that many of these things. So there's a lot of these formulaic things where you can learn how they say, uh, what did the rebuttal do? And you will see after you've repeated this exercise a couple of times that you're thinking of some very similar things and perfecting these sentences and making them better over time is very important. Let me give, let, let me one second to, to read the question and then I'll, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so to be honest, so, so the question is how to rebut mechanisms pretty much. So what you have been told is like you need to uh, you need to tell why things are not true and why it's not important. Sure, uh, but sometimes, like to be honest, here he, he, here is the hard truth hard truth uh, about these sort of situations. If you can prove the thing is not important and the thing is not relevant, that's the first priority. Like if you, if you want to like if you want to break it down into do these two simple things, like why is it not true? Why is it not relevant? Why is it not relevant is better because you don't have to delve into uh, if you prove that something is not relevant and that something is not important at all, then you don't even have to rebut it because uh, the first part is already getting. Obviously, you can if you feel that there is a risk of people not buying that it's not relevant and thinking that it actually is relevant. So in that sense, it's a it's a strategic call that you need to make. Uh, a lot in debating, you need to 
realize is managing risk. Uh, literally, uh, like okay, I'm not doing this instead of uh, instead of doing this. Uh, what is the risk that I'm taking of, of judges not research representing me or something this? And that's uh, that that's the beauty of the game, honestly. Uh, in some cases, so if you can prove that something is not important by either saying that it's not comparative happens on both, like non comparative rhythm means. It's happening on both sides of the house anyway, or that the impact is very insignificant, or there is targeting the group that should not be the metric of the debate, uh, or how do you say, uh, something like this. Uh, sure, do that. Then uh, if you think that you have done this well enough, don't have to do the true part at all. Uh, you, like, just, you just need to tell to a judge, now that I've said this, everything that, is, that flows from this argument is irrelevant. And that's the that's, uh, that's that, that's the thing. Uh, not, not necessarily on, only that way, but that, that, that's how you should finish it. And that's for prioritization and time management. That's the most efficient way. What we usually call for ESL speakers. That's the like like I'm not giving a lecture on framing, so I'm not going to delve into that. But like literally, the secret weapons of ESL debaters and how ESL debaters can do very well is to learn how to frame and out frame things because that's the like the yeah. Uh, if you compare ESL and EPL speakers, EPL speakers will always be more time efficient with words than ESL speakers. It will always take me much more times and much more, uh, how do you say, uh, how do you say, a lot, lot more things to, 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 uh, to convey as a single point rather than somebody else who is coming, who is, who is a native, native speaker to some extent. So if you're an ESL speaker, out framing and telling that something is not relevant is the most efficient way uh, to do it. But obviously it's not possible in every situation, that's one. So so like, obviously I, I'm telling you, uh, if it's possible, do it. You can practice it again uh, in, in, in the manner that, that I've said. In terms of true, uh, in terms of things are true, that is what I said when, when it's mechanism, right? That when you're rebutting the idea itself, you're not disproving that this thing is not true. That is the problem. The problem is you're thinking that you're doing it, uh, but uh, so, so look, uh, you're not debating the idea in BP. Uh, and that's the problem usually. That, that's what usually people uh, say to people in feedback, you, you had great ideas, uh, but this idea, like we didn't buy it or like it wasn't proven or something like this. So ideas can only get you so far uh, if you create them, right? Uh, the way that BP is judged is literally by the way that you have proven this idea. And uh, usually because of time constraints, you do not have uh, the ability to, to prove it to the fullest extent, and that's the problem. So the idea itself is always going to be to some extent stronger than uh, the way that people have proven that idea. That is, the, that is the concept, right? In the way that people have proven that idea is true mechanisms, right? Like why would, uh, like like backlash, people will, people will uh, be pissed off and backlash for, for certain things. Like there are so many things and ways to, like, like, like Literally, people usually say like there will be a lot of like like I don't know polarization or discourse if we do this policy. Uh, how do you say? Uh, and usually, what their what their argument is hinging on is is something very simple as aha, people will backlash and that will lead to polarization or something this. Or people will how do you say, act in a certain way and then this will lead to this. Or religious people how do you say care about this particular thing, uh, so they will uh, they will be pissed off and not ever change any of these things. Uh, if you dispute any of these premises and mechanisms that are proving the, the, the particular point, then uh, how do you say you are, like I think the, the, the most recent example that I have, I think it was feminist, like, like feminism, feminists should uh, combat for abolishment of Sharia law rather than uh, the misinterpretation in like a feminist, in feminist May or something like this. A lot of people have just like had a, like, like a lot of the arguments is like, ah, oh, they will be pissed if, if you want to abolish the Sharia law, they will all be pissed and a lot of these things. But a lot of these are in like a lot of impacts from this and how they would treat women, how they would treat feminism, so many arguments and impacts from this. Majority of these impacts were literally hinging on one idea, which is that all Muslims and even all clergy and even all politicians, uh, like even most politicians are so hardcore uh, that they purely think that Sharia law should be everywhere in, in, in every minute or something. This is a simplistic view of, uh, to some extent, of the of the of how the world operates, right? Uh, in, in in this association, combating this idea in particular and saying why a lot of people are not like like more moderate. A lot of people don't care as much. A lot of people have different opinions and different stuff. It's not like it's 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 not like they like they presented means that everything that flows from it, the whole idea falls. Otherwise. The idea itself seems very logical. The idea itself seems very powerful. But the fact that the idea was hinging on one piece of analysis, and that's usually where things are, are going, how things are going to happen. Usually, 
in uh, how do you say uh, unless like in like very highest highest rooms uh, in, in the tournament usually people have one or maybe two mechanisms not more and that's what I complain usually to people when they ask me for personal feedback you need to have more mechanisms and by, by the way that doesn't mean when you, when you're doing uh, less mechanisms doesn't mean that you're not going to win that's why people give themselves false uh, how do you say they feel good right like they, they they've done one mechanism and they want to debate good jobs on doing something well not necessarily uh, you, uh, it was risky to do this and just that risk paid off in the end in this situation but that's not how you calculate risk you you, you literally gambled uh, like you, you, you get like you, you were acting like in a casino or something like this uh, and something and in this case it paid off in some other case it might not pay off so managing this risk and having a couple of multiple mechanisms is very important especially because in this particular sense where i'm talking to you about rebuttal i'm telling you if you can find this mechanism the thing is hinging on and if you can actually prove that that this is not linked that this does not flow uh, into the into the point or that this is not true itself that, that this that the context is different that you can give an additional example why it's not true or something like this and then explain to a judge by the way and that's very important because sometimes judges don't just don't know this they, they like sometimes judges don't notice that the argument is hinging on these things so in this case you do need to say because the argument was hinging on this particular thing and the way that they have reproving these things, everything that they stated from these things, blah, 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 this, 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 and this, is also falling. And if you say that, that's the most efficient way to ruin the case. In a lot of places, in a lot of places, how do you say, uh, sometimes speeches of seven minutes can be destroyed in one or two minutes by picking the, the, the weak link, like, 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 jank, like, I don't know, like cutting off the, uh, the root of the problem. Again, sometimes it will not. That will not be possible, right? And that's that's why I'm saying, uh, be wary of dogmatic view of these of these things that I'm now saying to you. Because sometimes the mechanism is just good, or the mechanism is just to some extent true, and it's very less disputable. So this means that that's not your path to victory. But if you see somebody. Uh, uh, like uh, uh, somebody have an exploitative weakness where they're proving their point in a particular manner, like I said, how do you say you should try and exploit it. But that, again, to, 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 to wrap up the question, that does fall into the thing uh, that, that you say, why thing is not true. And, and that, that is actually, when people say why thing is not true, that is actually what they mean, right? It's not debate the idea, it's literally, how was that idea proven? What did they say? And that's why in the beginning, remember, I told you to write down the mechanism, write down the things that things are hinging on uh, or something like this, and then, uh, how do you say, about it. The problem is, I would delve deeper into the mechanisms. Uh, the problem is there is, a, a, like, usually I do this in analysis workshop. I don't have time to do this in rebuttal workshop. But if, if I have some analysis workshops online, I think I do. Uh, I think I do have, but for novices, so that's a bit, maybe you can find, maybe you can find by typing my name. So I do talk in some of these exercises about mechanisms, but like learning to spot the mechanism and learning to spot the weakness is a very, like very, very good and important skill to do. Again, can be practiced similar way, uh, in the similar way that I have been, uh, that I have been telling you the previous, um, like how, how to practice rebuttal, which means that, a lot, by the way, a lot of these things, uh, like I've given you three step structure of how to practice it alone. You can insert step 1.2, 1.5, step uh, 2.5, or something like this, which, where, which is where you can actually practice these additional things. So let's say that in the uh, first step where I told you that you should rank the options by strength or something like this. And in that sense, uh, so your next job can be, let's 1.5, let me listen to these points again and figure out where is the mechanism, what is the core of this structure of this argument, and you can give yourself time for this. And just like, literally, you need to, if you want to be better at rebuttal, you need to deconstruct rebuttal in your head. And you need to think of rebuttal as like separate skills that you need to learn that when combined is going to make you the best rebuttler in the world and then by proxy the best whip speaker uh, and the best uh, deputy speaker to, to some extent uh, in this association so that is the uh, that is the, that is that is the most important thing so there is uh, like the, i hope that this has answered the question uh, so let me um yeah so so if the uh, if the mechanism is true then you need to find another way to to to, to respond to it 
one of the ways, maybe the argument itself is irrelevant. That's what I said at the beginning. But uh, maybe, again, you can rebut the impact. You can, that's that's weaker because the, the argument will be true, but you can rebut and say, uh, this is not as impactful as they're, as, as they're saying, because, yeah, or for some of the reasons that, that they want to say. You can, uh, how do you say, uh, you, you can dispute different things, uh, but if you can dispute the mechanism and if you can break that link, that is the strongest option for sure. Uh, it's just sometimes impossible. It's just sometimes the argument is true. But also sometimes even that, it's not just about rebuttal, right? It's mostly uh, like after your rebuttal, what is left for you to weigh and what is left for you to trade off because you will always have to trade off something. Like even in the worst debates possible, like there's like, like even, like, I don't know, like I, can, I, I cannot think of like the, the worst debate possible example. <laughs> I don't also want, don't want to insult anybody to set the, the worst motions <coughs> or something like this, but even in the worst, most imbalanced motions, like even if the motion is the op heaviest motion in the world, op will still have to waste, we will still have to concede something from the gov. It's just that there will be very minute and very unimportant or something like this. But, uh, and that's a bit of digression before I, before I wrap up, because before I have this, that's why it's very important uh, to talk about these things in prep. Uh, so usually rebuttal, uh, you're giving yourself too much pressure if you're if you're thinking of rebuttal only inside of the uh, the the debate. Uh, if I'm closing, if I'm opening, I don't have that much time. But if I'm closing, I like after we've outlined some of the potential extensions, the next part that we talk about is like what are they going to run? Uh, like obviously we might be wrong and we might have different opinions and we should not dogmatically look at it. Oh, I think they're going to run this, so definitely like prepare all these things. But then discussing with your partner what is the best approaches for us to think about this, and then. This is where, for example, a lot of like, like I think the, the best strength of me and Yanko is framing. Literally, that's what we do. What that 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 is that is that is what we do best in this sort of situation. But that's where the framing comes from, uh, and that's where this like proving that something is irrelevant. So what we discuss is, uh, huh? So they're probably going to run this. Can we prove that this is irrelevant? And then we discuss this during prep time or something. Like that. So it's giving you much more time. It, it's very important because this relevance point that rebutting something is irrelevant is sometimes requiring two people bouncing ideas off each other uh, to some extent and, and thinking about it. So already from the get-go thinking about it is, is very important. If you have time and if you're better at prep, you can do it in opening half as well. If not, uh, it's usually uh, there is a good timing for second speaker. So for the first speaker, at some point, we'll have to just start writing. Uh, it depends on how quick, quick you are writing. Some people require second seven, eight, some people require 10 minutes, some people require two, but like in the time, in the downtime, definitely somebody will need some time to write their speech. In that time, the second speaker is usually just like, you know, like obviously in online debating, which is sad, nothing is happening, but like you're walking around the room if you're OG and you have the room or something, playing with chairs uh, around the room or something is being nervous. What you can also do is just start thinking and writing some of these thoughts on a piece of paper so you can better discuss it with your partner. How would I rebut it? What would I do? Uh, and what would I, what would I think uh, from, from this perspective, which is very important uh, if you're evaluating this. So starting early is also very important. There is one more thing uh, that I left for last because it's uh, it is important, but to some extent uh, it's it is hard for people to grasp, and it's very hard also to to some extent to explain. A lot of people, uh, I mean, to some extent, I've already told you in a simple way, but I just want to give you more theory behind it. So. If you want to break down rebuttal into into some like categories, how like if, if you wrote a textbook about rebuttal, you can define the rebuttal in two ways, uh, and also like if you want to if you want to watch Harish uh, Harish's judging workshop on rebuttal also mentions this and explains it very well, uh, which we have on Korea Judge Training Program. Like I'm plugging plugging this here, uh, um, so. There is things uh, that you call contradicting rebuttal and competing rebuttal. Contradicting rebuttal is not their contradicting, uh, it's not a uh, contradiction. Contradicting rebuttal pretty, pretty much is just a term for what we call normal rebuttal. So you are telling me why what they said is completely wrong uh, and not, not, not true. You're rebutting the mechanism or something else. The problem is competing rebuttal uh, is usually a much more common thing that I see amongst the people which usually comes from the fact that people are uh, rebutting ideas rather than rebutting mechanisms, which is to say that competing rebuttal is kind of like a, like a not kind of like a false rebuttal. Uh, competing rebuttal is telling me uh, not why they're wrong, 
but why you are correct, why, why something else might happen. So it's like, uh, no, these people are not going to backlash, they're going to do something else. They're going to do this. Uh, or uh, how do you say, no, America is not going to, how do you say, uh, cut diplomatic ties, they're going to do uh, something else. This is kind of like a hidden argument. And that's the problem. And that's what people don't realize. So you're never breaking the logic of their case. You're just telling me that there is another possibility that can also happen, which means that what I'm left with is a judge afterwards. It, it, that can be powerful, by the way. It's not, I'm not saying that it cannot be powerful. I'm just saying that uh, pretending to yourself that it's rebuttal is dangerous uh, because after you say something like this and after you're presenting to me, no, no, but they might do something else and uh, no, no, they will act in this way rather than what opening government is saying or, uh, uh, or, or something like this. You run the risk of just a judge, how do you say, having now two options. None of, none of them would be rebutted uh, because this is just, it, it, it will be taken like two arguments. The problem in this particular case is, is if you're comparing competing rebuttal, given that people give a lot less time when analyzing rebuttal, usually that means that the first one is going to win if given enough time, which means uh, that you would have been better, first of all, framing your rebuttal uh, part as, as, as an argument and giving it more analysis, but also you would have been better at doing both. In both discussing, okay, here is what they said in mechanism and here is why they're wrong. And then here is what would actually happen on our side of the hall. That gives you the best possibility. But people usually pretend that giving me the alternative version of the world. So no, right-wingers are not going to backlash. They are going to do this is not the, the, how do you say, addressing of particular points of why opening government told me that they're going to back. She's just giving me, ha, but they might do something else. Sure, they might, or, or something. This is very common. But again, given time constraints, it's very hard for me to delve deeper into this and, and, and explain it more because it's a, it's a very complex topic in my, in, in my opinion. But it's something that you should be aware and something that you should, how do you say, try and catch yourself doing are you actually answering and saying that something is not true? Or are you proposing that something alternative will happen? If you're proposing something alternative, not what opening government says something alternative will happen, that's a hidden argument. And that can be a good, like, that can actually be a good argument, good extension, good something. Uh, by the way, a lot of people who do not have an extension, sometimes their competing rebuttal is a very good extension that if they given them more time, would have possibly beaten all teams, but given that they constrained themselves by this being a rebuttal and them having to rush to their extension uh, or something that's in fourth minute or something is that's uh, that's that's where they're wrong. So so there is a lot of benefits of thinking of your points. Is what am I doing here? Am I telling that this is not a relevant case, which is what I said at the beginning, or or, or something? Is am I proving that this case is wrong? That this is and this is what, like this mechanism does not work. There's a logical leap. This, uh, these three things don't flow one from another or something is, uh, this mechanism goes on our side of the house and we're flipping the argument or something is, or am I saying uh, that, how do you say, they are not right because I am right because something else will happen. Because that's not, that, that's not uh, how do you say, in, in pure terms, uh, telling me why they're wrong. It's just telling me why you're right. And that's the argument rather than rebuttal in the beginning. So, uh, and that's sometimes the trap that people fall into. Uh, I've seen speeches where it's all of the rebuttal is just this. And that's usually stemming from uh, sentence counter sentence uh, mentality that I said at the beginning that needs to change. So you cannot have, like if you do sentence counter sentence, that's usually, that's usually where you go to. Uh, because like in sentence counter sentence, you're not necessarily evaluating the depth of, aha, so they said this mechanism, this is why it's not true, give me two reasons. So usually uh, when you say sentence counter sentence, uh, that's, uh, that's where you need to, how do you say, evaluate. Is this particular point just telling me that something else will happen rather than telling me that there are mechanisms of why this particular thing will happen is wrong? Uh, and that things cannot be confused uh, because, it, it, again, you might win, uh, but still it's a, it's a risk that you're taking uh, of a judge not buying it, of you not analyzing it well enough, and you're missing a very good opportunity to, uh, to how they say, be better at this. So the way that I structured this, this lecture, again, is I, would, I tried to be more practical because I think there's a lot of, uh, lot of uh, discussion already on theory, rebuttal, all these, these sort of things, situation, which I, in some cases, think is just very counterproductive. And I think the best way to actually learn the rebuttal is not to listen to this workshop. It's literally to just try and practice it in a more 
uh, like level, uh, how do you say, in, in a more uh, optimizing mindset. I want to optimize, I'm optimize what I'm doing. And you need to be, again, for that, you need to have the mentality on, of, uh, I need to relearn what I'm doing. I need to, and like analogies are not, analogies are several. If you're playing uh, gaming, like if, if, you, if you're used to some sort of, uh, how do you say, key binds or hot keys or something like this, uh, maybe they're not optimized or something like this. And like pros are using something like this. If you want to become a pro in this situation, you will need to relearn. It will be very awkward once you're playing the, playing the game at, at the beginning uh, or, or something like this. Like it's similar, like if in sports, like if you learn to, 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 to how do you say, uh, to dribble or shoot basketball in a, in a specific way, but that's not the optimal way to do it. It will be super awkward for you to try and do it, especially if you're doing it in a very important game or something is there where you want to prove yourself uh, or something. Is, so the mindset needs to be, uh, I need to optimize everything. And in order to optimize everything, I need to be honest that uh, there is always room for improvement, even if you're the best in the world. And that room for improvement needs to come with actively thinking about what do I need to improve and practicing that uh, literally like going to gym, like giving yourself more reps, giving yourself more uh, difficulties. So that's where the exercise that I wanted to show you. So uh, look at this uh, lesson as a, as like a gym lesson. So I was your gym coach now, even though I don't look like one. Uh, but yeah, do you have any questions uh, before we wrap this up? Uh, if you have any additional questions afterwards, you can message me. I'm pretty open. Um, uh, I might be working for, like uh, balancing the dating life and uh, and work and seeing and doing a lot of these things means that uh, it's it's tough life. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I, I will answer eventually. Don't worry. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's all that I think is important in this in this time. And obviously, there's more <laughs> there's more things to discuss. I can discuss this topic for three four hours if you want, but. There is not that much time. I'm going to let you go have your break because I already stole it. Um, oh, uh, one question before. If we didn't understand opponent's arguments. Yeah, that's 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 a tough one. Um, first of all, again, uh, if you understood something, give it a more charitable reading that you did than what you thought. You need to kind of imagine in that situation, uh, imagine in that situation is what, what did they want to run. So, so obviously, usually it's not fully misunderstanding uh, what I found. It's usually that you got some point, but you didn't get uh, some other point. Sometimes that will lead you to have to answer the idea rather than the mechanism because something is there. But obviously, uh, yeah, usually that comes from speakers that are speaking very messily without structure or, or some of these things. <laughs> In some cases, you just need to hope for the best that the judges also didn't get, uh, they didn't get the point. There is not, not that many, how do you say, advice is there rather than, uh, how do you say, becoming better at tracking uh, and becoming better at understanding. And the, the way to become better at, at the tracking and understanding I use again, similar to what I said, uh, the first step in my exercise uh, program, uh, sign up at milosh.com. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so, so it's, it's a hard question. I, there is no correct answer there, but I hope uh, I at least uh, answer it somehow. Um, okay. I think that's all that I had to say. Uh, again, if you want more, message me or comment on YouTube. I don't know if I'll look at comments where, wherever this will be posted, but yeah. Uh, and yeah, good luck in your future endeavors and uh, thank you.